Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week's topic guys is something that I don't talk about very often because to be honest with you, I'm not generally a big fan of using them. What is it? indicators, okay? There are so many indicators out there from relative strength indicators to Bollinger Bands to Fibonacci retraces to Com Channel Index, literally hundreds of these things. Well, today we're going to talk about moving averages because of all the indicators out there, I actually think this one is the most useful. This may be with VWAP, et cetera, and so forth, but I think moving averages are one of the most useful indicators, especially for newer traders out there because they will discern the trend of the chart a little bit Bit easier. So today we're going to talk about which moving averages are most effective and in what time frames they are most effective. What we're trying to stay away from are spaghetti charts. Okay, you definitely don't want charts where you can barely see the candlesticks because you have so many indicators on it, which I see quite frequently these days. So today we're going to keep it simple. We're going to talk about price and volume and how it relates to using indicators, specifically moving averages. Okay. So if you like these videos, guys, please click that like button, smash hammer that subscribe button, help a brother out and let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is how to effectively use moving averages. Um, as many of you guys know, I'm not the world's biggest moving average fan, okay? Uh, all of my trading is based upon price action. That means price and volume are everything, okay? Those green and red candlesticks, they mean everything. Uh, volume is also very important because price tells us what is happening, but the volume tells us how it's happening. Is it happening with commitment? Is it happening with a lack of commitment? Um, as you guys know, if is there's price movement with no volume, that's a warning sign. Um, so those types of things are the main focuses for my trading. However, there are lots and lots of indicators out there. You guys have seen many of them from Fibonacci retracements to Bollinger Bands to Stochastics um, to Relative Strength Indicators, Com Channel Index. I mean, I think there's about 400 of them. Um, so when you look at that, some traders think for whatever reason that there's a holy grail in there somewhere. Well, if there wasn't one single holy grail, there wouldn't need to be 400 indicators, would there? There would just be one. Well. I think one of the most commonly used indicators are moving averages. Okay, so we're going to talk about moving averages today. And again, uh, it's a topic that I don't do very often because, well, I don't use them that much. Okay, in fact, I only use one moving average, and that's the 200 period moving average on the daily chart. And we'll talk about why uh, in just a couple minutes. So before we get to that, though, we first have to talk about when will the insanity stop right when will the insanity stop um today's might be a small letdown okay usually these are pretty juicy we see some people doing some really stupid foolish shit um but today's might be a little different why because i'm traveling um and i'm on my laptop and i forgot to bring my external hard drive with me that has all my new stuff on it um so this one's a little bit older but i haven't used it before so it is new to you guys so what is it Ooh. We're gonna go to AMC, all right? Um, it's not that I have a real problem with meme stocks per se, except the fact that I have a real problem with meme stocks. Uh, it's just that the kind of stuff that people do and say on social media is just, it's pretty unbelievable. Um, I, I don't know if people are serious about the things they say um, or if it's just, I don't know, something to make themselves feel better, or I'm not really sure, but I mean, we read this as AMC is the squeeze is inevitable upon us. Please take into consideration the smaller accounts. The guys who have single digit and under 100 shares, these are most likely the people working nine to five, struggling and trying their hardest to do their part. Quote, let's hold for them. Hashtag AMC squeeze. Huh? let's hold for them right so i mean the next time you get into a trade or an investment are you thinking about the the nine to five people struggling their hardest to do their part and you want to hold for them or do you want to just take their money i don't know about you guys but i just want to take their money okay because if they're stupid enough to do that stuff then they're stupid enough to give their money away 
All right. So I just found this comment fascinating because we've talked a lot about um, some of these Wall Street bets and meme stocks and stonks and whatever the heck you want to call them. Um, well, no, no, Hugh, this was actually right in the middle of it. As you can see, it's upon us, inevitably upon us. I think it happened May 24th. So my point is this was a couple days into it. Uh, that's not the point, though. The point simply is, what are these people really up to? Like, why are you worried about what other people are doing? And there's the bigger comment, the bigger picture to this is you shouldn't be right you're going to read your candlesticks and we're going to look at moving averages again today um and you look at your volume but what the rest of the world is doing should be of no concern to you all right what your uber driver tells you about stocks garbage okay what your mom and dad tells you about stocks garbage okay you do your own homework you read your own charts why why do i tell you this because one it's the best way to learn but two Everyone out there is trying to get rich quick and everyone knows something, but they don't know anything. And, and most people are taking advice from people they have no business taking advice from, i.e. people that are grossly unsuccessful and shouldn't even be giving advice. But for some reason, because of FOMO and the need to be right and the want to get rich, people are listening to anybody they can get. I mean, they would probably listen to a homeless person under the, the underpass in Los Angeles these days, right? Because you want to be that person. And like we talked about earlier, there is no get rich quick. Okay, the, the quick part is gone. All right, 99.9% .9 of people that have considerable wealth do it over the long period of time, 10, 20, 30 years. You're not any different. I know you think you're the exception, but think of the term exception. It's the exception, right? It's not likely gonna be you. So my point is, is let's hold for the little guy, right? The most likely struggling working nine to five, really? okay whatever so again this week's not nearly as glaring as you know weeks in the past where somebody's lost a million dollars in you know in 10 days or they turned three thousand into three million and then gave all of it back you know that kind of stuff um the point here is to simply say take care of you and don't worry about anybody else this this crap like let's hold for them really let's hold for them is that why you guys hold you know your tesla stock for all the little people out there yeah, I'm sure that's why Elon's doing what he's doing for all the little people out there, right? Come on, just get out of here. Get, cut the crap, okay? Nobody's that idealistic, all right? And if they are, they voted for Bernie Sanders and he's not running anymore, okay? All right, let's move along. So let's talk about moving averages, okay? Um, as is the case with many indicators, they lag price, right? And that's the one thing you need to, to understand in today's lecture. And while I'll, don't worry, I'll mention it three or 400 more times. They lag price, okay? Price has to happen before moving averages happen. Got it? This is where we go back to price is always number one, right? It says here, in general, at live traders, we're not big proponents of indicators as there are literally hundreds of them and most are not helpful. Price and volume are the two main focal points in our trading. However, we do like to use moving averages as a guide, particularly, excuse me, for management purposes. So it's important to note that MAs are not support or resistance. They are lagging indicators, which means that price must happen before the indicator can form, which means that price is much more highly regarded, okay? you If you take away one thing today, understand that price and volume are still number one but that doesn't mean using moving averages aren't useful they are useful okay so you'll also come to notice as you see in the charts because this is mostly a chart based lecture here today i only have two text slides in the whole thing um is moving averages are much more relevant much more useful much more powerful in up and down trending stocks when a stock goes sideways moving averages Honestly, they're not very helpful at all, okay? Um, so there's really four moving averages that we focus on, all right? The nine period moving average, the 20 period, the 50 period, and the 200 period, all right? Now, if you wanna use a 21 period moving average, I know Unmall uses a 21, you can do that, that's fine, okay? Would I recommend you putting all four of these on your charts? Answer, no. Unequivocally, absolutely, positively, no, okay? Moving average, if you wanna use exponential, Oscar, that's fine, I prefer the simple moving edge. Now, I understand professional trading strategies um, has exponential in them. Uh, when I update it, I'm probably gonna change the exponential to simple. I just prefer simple moving averages. Again, whatever it is you choose, 
use that. I would not cross, for example, I wouldn't use a 50 period exponential with a 200 period simple. Either use exponential or use simple. That's fine. Either is fine. All right. Um, and no, I would not have four moving averages on your chart. I would have one to two, maybe three on the high, 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 high side, one to two. Okay. And which one you choose really depends on the time frame in which you're using. So if you're scalping on the one and the two minute chart, then I would probably have a nine and a 20 on there, right? If you're a swing or a core trader where you're sitting there on weekly and monthly charts, I'd probably have the 50 MA and the 200 MA on there. Okay. Now, if you're trading like five and 15 minute charts, the 20 and the 50 are probably going to be your best bet, right? So the 20 can be used on all charts, as it says, it can be used on all charts. Okay. But I would save the 20 and the nine for lower time frames, like the one, two and five. If you're trading the five, 15 and 60, I'd probably use the 20 and the 50. And if you're trading daily, weekly, monthlies, I would use the 50 and the 200, okay, as it says on here, all right? Um, so again, you can use it on intraday charts. I would say the 50 is maybe the most commonly used uh, when it comes to daily versus intraday. It crosses between them, right? The 200 is only and exclusively used <clears throat> on daily and weekly charts. You could throw it on a 60 if you really, really wanted to, okay? So let's talk a little bit more about why and how moving averages can be useful to us. What do they actually do for us? They're these little squiggly lines on a chart and what do they do for us? The one thing I want to say though, before I really dig deep into this is what we are not going for, what we are not looking to do are spaghetti charts, right? We've seen, and I don't have one in here right now, but we've seen some folks where they have so many things, indicators on their chart, you can't even see the candlesticks. Right? I mean, seriously, I've seen traders with 10, 15 indicators on their charts, and you just shake your head and go, is there some like special holy grail, you know, when the MACD crosses over the Bollinger Band and the Com Channel Index is at plus 50 with the RSI at 37 and the Fibonacci at 68.2? No, none of that shit happens. Okay, and if it did, they wouldn't, ha you know, they wouldn't be teaching it to you. You know, they'd have Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett polishing their toenails. All right, but that's not the case. All right, so the key here is to pick one or two indicators that you like, okay? One or two indicators that you like, all right? And I think moving averages should likely be one of them, all right? I'm trying to get a job at CNN on mall. It's 61.8, not 68.2. Perfect, just perfect. I'm going to pass the job interview. More misinformation. All right, so what are they good for? And it's an important question. How can they be applied to your charts effectively. And that's the key part, effectively, okay? There's really five ways we use moving averages, all right? One, they can use as a guideline for trends. Now, obviously, as you get better and better with reading charts, you don't need moving averages to tell you a stock is in an uptrend or a downtrend. But for new traders, that squiggly line can be very helpful. It's moving higher, it's probably an uptrend. If it's moving sideways, it's probably in a sideways trend. And if it's moving lower, it's probably in a downtrend. Now, that's not 100% accurate, um, but as a guideline for trends. For me, this is the one I least use moving averages for. Because again, once you gain some experience with charts, you don't need a line to tell you if a stock's going higher or lower. You can read the chart, okay? So I'm going to kind of gloss over that one a little bit. We will talk about it in just a minute. Um, second, moving averages as areas of support or resistance. Now, you're going to hear me say this over and over and over again. Moving average in and of and by themselves cannot be support or resistance. I'm going to repeat it. They cannot be support or resistance by themselves. And you're sitting there going, well, why the hell did you put it in there then, Jared? Moving averages are areas of support and resistance. You just said it. Notice right below it says, usually only applied when other concepts are converging in the same area. See, you can have a pivot on a stock and in and of and by itself, that is support. But if there's just a moving average sitting there, it doesn't mean anything in and of itself by itself right? You need other concepts converging in that area to really make it the best it can be. So again, we will look at this in just a minute, all right? Moving averages as target areas. Um, this is mainly used and I would say exclusively used for climactics and parabolics. Why does this error keep popping on my screen? What the heck is going on with that thing? All right. It's mainly used for climactics, okay? 
For those of you who have taken professional trading strategies, you'll know when we look at parabolics and climactics, um, we're looking for 50% retracements. We're looking for um, usually that or a moving average. Okay, and that would be a target area. Now, I'm not referring to the nine EMA trail. Okay, um, we can certainly use it as a management approach, right? But I'm talking about it as a target area approach. Does that make sense? Um, in fact, I don't even have any examples of it as a management approach in today's lecture. I probably should have put some of those in there. Um, but moving averages is target. So when you're in a climactic and see a stock just get absolutely hammered. Where the moving average is, is a good first target area, which we'll see in a minute. Next, moving averages as trade entry confirmation areas. You're like, what? What do you mean a moving average is a trade entry? You'll see, especially as it relates to breakouts and buy setups, okay? We can actually use where the moving average is as a guide to the likely area where a stock will begin to break out, okay? And then last but not least, moving averages expansion. You're like, what does that mean? when to stay away for possible reversal areas, okay? You'll start seeing, for example, the 20 MA and the 50 MA start to diverge away from each other in a significant manner. And again, don't worry, there are examples of these in just a minute, all right? So when you start seeing these moving averages diverge away from each other in a very significant manner, something's going on there. The, the best usual possible explanation is it's a reversal point. The stock is so extended, it's likely going to turn the other direction. So again, you'll see every one of these in that way. But moving averages are absolutely valuable things to use, particularly for newer traders. Okay, uh, And there's one more in here that I didn't put in there, and that is moving averages as management methods. Moving averages as management methods. Five or sorry, nine EMA trailing, 20, 20 EMA trailing, those types of things. Unmall has used many of those in the past, uh, and you guys can use them as well. Certainly, they take a lot of time and effort because you have to continually adjust that stop loss as the stock trends in your direction. Okay, but let's start with as a guideline for trends. This is the most basic thing to use a moving averages for, right? You have a higher high and a higher low, and 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 a higher high and a higher low. Right, two or more higher highs and higher lows, we are in an uptrend. Now, I think for most people, it's pretty obvious. If you were to take off this blue line, which happens to be a 20 period moving average, 20 period moving average, if you took it off, you would know the stock's going higher. I mean, heck, down here it's at $37 and up here it's at $38. So clearly from point A to point B, it's moved up a dollar and you can draw a pretty nice line there. Oh wait, that's the moving average. So I think for most traders, this is the simplest form of a moving average, and that form is to discern the trend. But again, as an experienced trader, you don't really need to discern the trend. You know what's there. If I erase this moving average, you guys would all tell me the stock's in an uptrend, okay? So the least useful part of a moving average is this, in my opinion, okay? Now, this, however, this is useful. Why does this script keep coming up? Anyway. We have a stock here on a 60 minute chart that's pulling back, consolidating, goes higher, pulls back, and then you have this failed buy setup right here, right? Right there at the moving average, take note, it tries to go higher and it fails. It takes a while, goes sideways, goes sideways, and then it fails. And when I mean fails, I mean this thing gets crushed. I mean, it goes from $25 up here to $19.50 in a day, a couple few hours, five hours, but notice, you have red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar, super wide range red bar right out of PTS, another big red bar, a bottoming tail, and we can see the entry right there at 2050 with a stop loss at 1950. Now, could you get in a little bit under 2050? Sure, maybe 2025, 20, 2030, 20, something like that, okay? So if you notice the bounce back up, wide range, boom, right? So this is what you wanna see. But how do we know on a climactic or a parabolic Okay, where the target area is. Well, there's three areas, right? There's a 50% retracement. This is right out of professional trading. There's a 50% retracement. There's the prior resistance area. And then there is the moving average. And in this case, note where the declining 20 period moving average, the simple moving average is right here. It's right there. So this would be this 2244 area, 2240 area. This would be a potential first target. But you'll also notice 
this is also where there's some resistance. Yeah, it's a little above the 22 area, but there's also some more resistance right here. So it's an area of resistance as well. Uh, it depends where you want to start the top of the climactic. You might want to start it at 2350 because that's when the waterfall started. And if you started at 2350 and go to 1950, it's kind of a little bit higher than a 50% retracement. Okay. Um, so if you take a look at this, that is using moving averages as target areas, right? Using moving averages as target areas, okay? Um, you don't have to, but I find them to be very useful with climactics. Why? Because one of the other criteria of a climactic is what? The distance away from the moving average. Remember I just said a second ago, well, in fact, we'll go back to this slide real quick. Remember I just said moving average expansion when to stay away, possible reversal points, moving average expansion. What do we have right here? That's an expansion away from the moving average, right? It's a huge expansion away from the moving average, which is a possible reversal point. In this case, it's climactic, so it is a reversal point. Um, but you can see the 50% retracement, that's target one, and then target two would be 100% retracement, all right? Next, multiple concepts converging. So. This is the same chart that we saw first. And I told you guys, hey, you probably don't need a moving average to tell you it's in an uptrend, and you don't. But notice if we take a look at this buy setup right here, where's the moving average? It's right under the buy setup. Where's the moving average? It's right at support. Where is the buy setup? Right at support, right at the moving average on a 50% retracement. Okay, so if you took the top of the pivot, which is this red line here, take the bottom of the pivot, that's roughly 50%, right? So that line is 50. This line here where my cursor is, that's support. Where's the moving average? Pretty much right there. It doesn't have to touch the moving average. It just has to be close or near the moving average. So we're using this as an area where the stock should bounce because multiple concepts are converging here. You're sitting at support on a 50% retracement at the rising 20 period moving average, okay? So remember I said you cannot use moving averages by themselves, of and by themselves as support. There has to be other concepts, multiple concepts converging. Well, it's exactly what we have here, right? We have at least three concepts converging here. We're in an uptrend, we're pulling back 50%, we're at support, and the moving average is right there. Okay, so that's an example of where the moving average is just one more indication of the reversal. All right, in this case, the reversal is the pivot to go higher, the buy setup. Okay. Entry here, stop here. You guys get the point, right? Entry here, stop here, boom. First target, prior pivot high. Second target, trail it out. Okay, and you'll notice also in this uptrend, what does the moving average act as? It's like a magnet, right? Every time you get a little far away from the moving average, three to five bars, boom, it pulls back. Get three to five bars, boom, it pulls back. And that goes for this whole trend up. It gets four or five bars up, consolidates, gets four or five bars up, pulls back. So there's two types of corrections, right? There's a correction through price, and there's a correction through time. The price correction is the pullback. The time correction is the consolidation. Okay, so in this case, we're looking at both. The consolidation is the time correction right there, and there's the pullback price correction. But again, to reiterate, every time the moving average gets far away from price, it pulls back like a magnet. It's like a magnet, okay? Now, same concept, 20 period moving average, okay? Whoops, hold on one second, change that out. All right. 20 period moving average, but multiple concepts converging. Once again, notice the daily of the stock, because we always start with the higher time from the 60 or the daily, is really extended far from the moving average. It's like a magnet back to the moving average. So now we drill down, we get a wide range green bar that takes out resistance to the left, pulls back where? Right to the moving average, right to support on roughly a 50% retracement, right? On roughly a 50% retracement. So this is once again, multiple concepts converging in an area. Bottoming tails, change of color, 50% retracement, rising moving average, level two support, multiple time frame analysis, daily and 15. 
It's just one more indicator, which makes it one more step more reliable, if that makes sense, right? Um, so this is using the moving average with multiple other concepts, okay? Now, remember I said moving averages can also be used as potential areas for a triggering a breakout or a buy setup. Well, this is a great example. One of the most frequent questions I get is, how do I know that a breakout has rested long enough? Like I get that question all the time. Jared, how do I know? Is a four bar rest enough? Is a seven bar rest enough? Is a 10 bar rest enough to know that a breakout is gonna go higher? Well, the general answer that I give is when it gets at or near the rising moving average, right? At or near the rising moving average. All right, so in this case, you have a stock that's moving up. Note, see the distance, the white space here, the distance between the moving average? And what happens? It consolidates back towards the moving average, okay? So when, again, you look at it, it's not ready here. It's not ready here. It's not ready here. It's not ready here. Now, as we get close, I usually tell people, if we're about 70 or 80% of the way back to the moving average, you don't have to touch it. In this case, we do, but you don't have to touch it. When you get 70 to 80% of the way back to the moving average, it's ready. And in this case, we're using the moving average as confirmation that the breakout is ready. Does that mean as soon as it touches it, it's going to trigger? Not necessarily. Well, sure, Rachel. I mean, there's a bunch of different, con you know, we're not just looking at one concept. We never look at one concept, right? So narrow range bars, lower volume, uptrend. I mean, come on, right? We have, we always have multiple concepts converging in an area for good trades. If you don't, it's not that good of a trade. Okay, but in this case, it comes back and actually touches the moving average before it takes off. So it goes from like 599 all the way up to 608. It's pretty awesome. And then the volume comes in right upon entry. So this is a case where we're using the moving average as our guide to when the stock is ready, when the stock has rested long enough to get ready to move in this case breakout. Okay, so. All right. Here's another example, right? Here's a stock that's moving up, moving up, going sideways, rip wide range bar, pulls back where? To support at the rising moving average on a 50% retracement. Great area to buy, okay? Moves higher and then does this. Now again, notice, notice all the space here, this white space right there. Too much space, you're too far from the moving average. The moving average is like a magnet. So the point simply is when a stock gets at or near, doesn't have to touch it, at or near a moving average, it's likely ready to bounce. You can see it over here again. Look at the top right there, right? So space, 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 pulls back to the moving average, boom, bounces, okay? So this is the one I wanted to focus on. This is a breakout, what I would call a ruler breakout on some serious volume right there. And again, far from the moving average, far from the moving average, far from the moving average, and then narrow range, narrow range, narrow range, doesn't quite touch it, but when it gets really close to it, you know it's just about ready. So it's one more layer of confirmation, okay? All right, let's take a look at moving averages as potential support, okay? So remember I said in and of themselves, by themselves, we don't generally look at moving averages as support. We don't, but... But, 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 we do have to respect them, okay? So in this case, we're on a daily chart and says gapping at or near the 200 period moving average, especially on the daily chart, can often act like, note that word, act like a significant support area, okay? If of all the moving averages out there, okay, the 200 period moving average is the most potent by far, why? because it's one of the few moving averages that everyone uses, right? Hedge fund managers use it, market makers, money managers, we use it, okay? So when you look at it, guys, this is the one, especially on the daily, that you wanna respect the most. You should respect all moving averages, you shouldn't just ignore them, but this is the one you wanna watch for. So what's the point here? If you see a 200 period moving average and you see a stock gapping into it, near it, at it, around it, anywhere near it, be very, very careful. All right, this is a stock, for example, where you have a bottoming tail engulfed by a red bar and then they get the gap down. But note the bottoming tail here. 
Look at the bottoming tail. The bottoming tail happens because it's at the 200 period moving average. All right. Are there times, of course, nothing's 100%. Are there times it slices through the 200? There are, but it's extremely rare. You will almost always see a reaction at the 200 period moving average. So if you are looking to trade a stock at or near the 200, don't. Make sure in this case it's below it or if you're going long, it's above it. All right. If you see a stock at or near the 200 on the daily or the weekly or the monthly, be very, very, very careful. It's extremely rare just to slice through it. Okay. Let's take a look at it again. This one was from this morning on XPEV. So notice this is a stock that you're going, wait a second. I don't understand, Jared. Trust me, you will in just a second. This is a stock that's 3850. That's where it's at. Okay. So this is a stock that's actually gapping up, right? It's gapping up. And I'll show you here in just a second. All right. So that's XPEV today. Notice the moving average is at 39.78. 39.78 on XPEV. Well, this stock, if we go back, was gapping right into that area, right? The pre-market high was 39. It's at 38.47. This is a pre-market chart. The market hadn't even opened yet. So notice it's between 38.50 and 39 dollars. Okay. If we go back to this chart. I'm only doing because it it's bigger. You're gapping right into that. Are you sure you're 50, 70 cents away from it? That's close enough on a stock that does three dollars in range to be extremely concerned. So this is the stock that's kind of chopping around and. The, or the rising in this case, the rising 200 period moving average is right above you. And then above that is the rising 50 MA. So this is an area that you don't want to touch. Let the stock handle this area first. Let the stock break above this area. Let the stock break below this area. But right now with the gap up today on XPEV, and I don't know because I haven't looked, but I bet you if someone could look and tell me, I bet you XPEV is not above 39.78 today. I bet you it's hanging out. My guess is it's in a narrow range doji day. Why? Because it's gapping right near a 200 period moving average. My guess would be it's having a relatively narrow range day. Nothing like this day from yesterday. Okay. And there it is. It's at 39.30, somebody just said, and it's a relatively narrow range day. Yeah, it's sitting just below the 200 period moving average. So what's going to happen? It's going to take probably a day or two, maybe more, for this stock to capitulate and get through this area and move above it. But the day it gaps at or near it, be very, very careful. Be very, very careful on that day because the stock is not likely to break it. Of course, there are instances and circumstances where it does break it, okay? But it's rare. So it's best to not even mess with it. Okay, exactly. Toad in a blender back and forth. Okay, exactly. All right. Here's another great example. Okay, on CVX. All right, this was from today. This is CVX gapping down to 98.74. Notice where it's at. It's right at the rising 200 period moving average. It's sitting there. Now, I don't know what CVX is doing this very moment, but I would bet it's sitting right around the 200 period moving average. Okay, why? Because this is what stocks do when they gap at or near the 200 period moving average. Okay, and in this case, there happens to also be a little bit of support to the left, right? Bottoming tail, bottoming tail. Okay, so when you look at that, it's pretty crazy, right? So my point, respect the 200 period moving average, especially on higher time frames. I will not be using the 200 on a one minute chart, two minute, five minute, 15 minute, maybe on the 60, definitely on the daily, weekly and monthly chart. But if you see a stock, if you're an intraday trader and you see a stock gapping to the 200 at or near it, stay away from it. Okay. Stay away from it. Be very, very, very careful. Okay. It acts as support and resistance very frequently. So we have to respect it. Okay. Now, remember a couple of minutes ago, I said, Hey, we can look at moving averages as the expansion, sorry, the expansion of moving averages as potential um, reversal points. Well, this is what we're going to look at right now. Okay. Notice, all right, notice we have in this case, a 200 and a 50. Now, I don't normally use 250 on an intraday time frame. I would use a 20 and a 50. 
Okay, let me repeat myself. I would normally use a 20 and a 50. I don't honestly use moving averages that often, but the point I'm simply making is look at the divergence here. Look at the distance. They started over here where the 200 was sitting at about 2050 and the 50 was sitting at about 1950, right? A dollar apart right there. Notice by the time they get down here, the 50 is at 18 and the 200 is at 2030. That, that, that range expanded away from me, okay? That's what you're after here, right? That is what you're after. So what does this mean? Well, if this range is expanding, that means price action has also accelerated, all right? This is very important here. See, the 200 is never going to move quickly. Hence, it's a 200 period moving average. 200 of these bar periods is what that stands for, right? Bar, bar, bar. 200 of these bars is the average represented right here at 2050, okay? And then right down here, this is 50 bars, 50 periods, okay? The point though is you'll notice the expansion, the acceleration. Well, the expansion between these two moving averages is an indication of accelerated prices. So why is this important? It's important because if prices accelerate so much to get these moving averages to expand away from each other, there's a good chance a reversal is likely going to happen right? There's a good chance a reversal is likely going to happen. So in this particular case, what is an indication of that? Not just the distance between the price and the moving average, not just the, the moving averages being far apart, but also what? Huge volume, right? Huge volume here. Notice it peekabooed lower and never went anywhere. So now we're doing the same thing multiple concepts converging in an area. So now we're taking three concepts. We're saying, wow, whoopsie, the moving averages are expanding away from each other. The stock expanded away from one moving average and then came back to the moving average, that's key, and tried to go lower on huge volume and failed to do so. So we're taking three concepts right there, all right? And that last one is one of the most important ones here. It tried to peak above below. Notice right there, it tried to go lower. Huge volume comes in, no price movement. The stock's coming back up. All right, so what is the point? Don't short it. Don't short this stock. It's too extended, it's too tired, and it already tried to go lower, and the buyer stepped in and said, no, no. This is a good price point. This is cheap. This is value down here. We're going to buy it up. Okay, you can see it again right here. Same kind of idea. All right, you have the 200 and the 50, and the 200 and the 50 expand away from each other as the stock expands away from the 50, and then it consolidates back towards the 50. Okay, and then you see bottoming tails, you see a green engulfing bar, and then you see a little peekaboo breakdown. On volume, doesn't go anywhere. This stock's going higher. All right, this stock is going higher. Okay, so that is basically when you take a look at it the five ways that you can apply moving averages to your trading now there's one more way we talked about earlier and that's using moving averages as management methods and i'm not going to talk about that today all right but you could use one more moving averages as management methods 90 ma trail 10 ma trail 20 ma trail or 20 ma it doesn't have to be exponential exponential moving averages so you can use them as a guideline for trends you can use them as areas of support or resistance assuming they happen near a pivot or support you can use them as target areas specifically for climactics you can use them as trade entry and confirmation areas like we looked at on breakouts and even buy setups sometimes. And then when they're expanding away from each other, you can look at them as possible reversal points as well. So they're, they can be very effective when used properly with price and volume, but in and of themselves, by themselves, they're worthless. Why? Because price has to happen first. Price tells us what's happening, volume tells us how it's happening, and then the moving average is just another area of indication of what may have, right? It's just one more indicator. Remember, multiple concepts converging in an area is what we're looking after. This is just one more concept happening in that area, okay? But as I said many, 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 many times, they are not actual areas of support and resistance. Only price can be actual areas of support or resistance. But 
they can be very useful. So the basic lesson here that I want you guys to learn is they are useful, especially for new traders. They can be very helpful. But price is number one. Volume is number one, right? 1A one and 1B, okay? These are things that will just complement price and volume. That's the best way to look at moving averages. They help to complement price and volume. And one last quick comment before we end this. Whenever you see an expansion away from a moving average, a reversal is more likely. Anytime you see an expansion away from a moving average, a reversal is more likely. And we saw this on the very first slide before I come back to this last one again, right? See this right here, guys? Right there, okay? An expansion away from moving averages, right there, that's a reversal. Expansion away from moving average, that's a reversal, okay? So anytime you see a big expansion away from a moving average, know there's likely a reversal or a pivot that's coming because moving averages act as magnets. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that lecture on moving averages. I hope you can use them more effectively now to make more money as a trader. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.